come to the power of powering up discoverable bus attached to devices uh, ball. Yesterday, Abel presented his talk about uh, about yeah the powering sequence for devices that are attached to discoverable buses, but that are supplied by non-discoverable resources. And uh, we had a lively discussion during the talk. We had uh, an even livelier discussion uh, in the hall. And uh, it seems like we're getting close to, to having the, the final, the, 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 a good solution that can be accepted upstream. So to summarize what... Uh... Is it good now? Okay, okay. It, it was on though, right? No? Maybe. <laughs> anyway, uh, so the, the solution proposed was to introduce a PCI slot device driver that would be a platform device, uh, a numer it would be the child of the PCI host controller device. No? Can, can we though? Uh, so that's, it would be hardware accurate if it would be... Like, yes. Yeah, so. if, you, if you put it under the PCI host controller node, it would be hardware accurate. It's attached to the PCI, so it needs to be part uh, child node of the PCI. Are you talking about the DT binding now or about the structure in the node? No, DT, DT device. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And also, if we make it a child of the PCI host controller node, then we will only create instantiate those devices when the host controller is broke, which makes sense, I guess, because uh, making creating those slots without uh, the bucking yeah. controller. Okay. What was if, if, if uh, Linux, I mean, the, the PCI hot plug code doesn't care. You can do whatever you want there. It's If you want to do that, wonderful. Yeah, okay. So, uh, uh, yeah. yeah, I think, but then I think we, we should can focus on PCI for same, now. You can replicate the same solution basically for every discoverable. No, it's, it, it's, this, is, this is like really specific to PCI because PCI already has this hot plug capability where we have a way to do drivers for this purpose, we just need to that we just need to hook in. So for other buses, um, we would have to restart the, the discussion. But it could be similar to it, the it could be it could be completely different. Well, let let's do this one. Okay, sure. Yeah. And we already solved and we already solved USB. USB yes. is already solved too. So yeah. we got USB. This will be PCI. I guess MMIO already has that, right? Or what was MDIO. MDIO has one. Yeah, but okay. But, all right. So let's just take these one bus at a time. And so another thing that uh, came up later was uh, the fact that we actually have uh, two devices in that package. One is uh, a PCI device and another is a, a, a serial device that uh, share some parts of the power sequence, uh, except that we, we, it turned out that they don't really. But uh, since we were mentioning that, there is uh, there has been two years ago, there has been um, a proposal of adding a power sequencing subsystem to the Linux kernel. Um, it, it, it was it was related to to the to, to, to that specific Bluetooth and Wi-Fi chip. Um, it seems that we no longer need it, but I thought it's it's maybe it's it's worth discussing it. And uh... so basically, looking at the schematics this morning, we realized that there are actually two separate uh, GPIOs: one for Bluetooth, one for Wi-Fi. Even if the regulators are shared, that can be handled by the uh, regulator framework. So uh, you're proposing a new subsystem to other uh, powering uh, when we have already all the, the power management code, uh, which is kind of a nightmare to deal with already. So uh, I'm, I'm trying yes. to understand what so you this, said this then. A, this is a subsystem that you were not in the talk yesterday, right? I wasn't, no. No. So the, the thing that has been proposed multiple times and rejected multiple times mm -hmm. is a generic power sequencing framework where you have a device tree description for a sequence of things that you need to power on any kind of device. And then we would be able to hook into that from a PCI hot plug driver or from any other driver. Okay, I get that. But then uh, suspend, resume, uh, runtime, suspend, runtime, resume, all of that. How does that work with that? That's kind of my point. It's already a nightmare to deal with that. And when you suspend and resume, you have to redo the powering second sequence for all that. And you have ordering based on the device, powering child, et cetera. <laughs> okay. Well, they, <laughs> not really. So the, the thing is, 
the um, the power sequencing framework would make it really simple to have a generic PCI hot plug driver that handles all kinds of devices because you can describe no. the power sequencing for arbitrary wireless devices in a device node without so, having to have so, code specific to each kind of device behind that bus in the driver that handles nah, the bus. Nah, that, that's <laughs> dreaming, seriously. We're, we're never going to have generic power sequencing in DT. I'll just say that. Until, <laughs> well, uh, that's unfortunate. Until we add BPF to device tree. <laughs> <laughs> because we really need to separate the power management from functional drivers. For example, right now we have a nightmare in the I2C where if you don't have a driver, uh, you cannot access I2C nodes to let's say do firmware update and stuff like that and you cannot do firmware update if you have the driver attached because it can be disturbed by uh, firmware update so you have to have specific hooks in device driver uh, you cannot rely on user space solutions if we had a separate step of powering up the device with the proper power sequencing uh, and allowing access uh, to it through I2C, to, through Hydro, whatever. Um, and then we had a functional piece that binds on top of that, that would make uh, a lot of operations much simpler and much more, um, I guess, less convoluted. And it also would be nice from the point of uh, passing devices to VMs, where you have the host responsible for the power management and power sequencing. And then the VM is where your functional uh, piece lives. Yeah, but you have device driver stacks on top of device drivers and the, the higher you go in the stack, you, you, you still have power management stuff there. And I mean, Greg can tell like, 90% of the patches I sent recently, they all get backports because that's all bug fixes for that mess. And suspend, resume, runtime suspend, return of individual devices or entire system suspend, resume is just buggy as hell because it's hard to, to get the, the PM framework uh, being used correctly. I mean, yes. And hard. so now on top of that, you want to add this. And so I'm, I'm scared. I mean, I'm already dealing with a lot of bug on that, so. But we already have ACPI, which essentially does a lot of that. No, but again, that's to the level. You have the higher drivers that, that, that do power control. We have uh, uh, mostly decided on doing it the uh, with the PCI hot plug driver, but then the question is how to represent the power sequencing in the device tree. And the, the two ideas that uh, we have discussed so far is either we identify the power sequencing by a string that says what kind of sequencing we need based on the device that's behind it, or we try to describe it, which is the one that Rob said we will never do. Um, so if we if we're at the point where we just know we need code in the uh, hot plug <coughs> driver that just knows about all possible sequencing, identifying them by a class of device. But but what I'm not hearing is a discussion how you you make that agree with the the device three uh, like the struct device parent child ordering that that uh, that is used by PM code for doing suspend resume and runtime suspend and resume stuff. Right. Because then you have dependency between those struct devices to to be able to do suspend and resume. Right. And one problem that I see is if we do it in the PCI hot plug driver the device tree binding for PCI, as far as I understand, this has a node that is both the slot and the device behind it. So it would have to go into that node. It does solve the problem that, that you, you mentioned, where we need the references to all the um, regulator and clock and so on resources, both for the power sequencing and at runtime. But that part becomes easy. Um, but it also does conflate the thing where we have two drivers using the same device node to look at those resources. So the, the hot plug driver and we have the device driver doing the same, uh, touching the same regulators both at probe time and at runtime. So, Lauren, Lauren had a question. 
Bergen? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Great. Uh, it sounds to me that at the end of the day, what we're looking at is power sequencing requirements, regulators, GPIOs, and all that, that are very specific to each particular device. Uh, and traditionally in a non-hot pluggable uh, platform uh, with non-hot pluggable devices, that is definitely what the driver for that particular device will handle because the logic that's needed to encode that power sequence is uh, is put there. If we cannot move that logic to the device tree, uh, looking at, I mean, trying to look at it probably in different ways, but it seems to me that if we need to power up the device before we do the enumeration on the bus, which is a hard requirement here, we need to have that logic encoded somewhere. Uh, and moving it out of the driver for the particular device, if it's a logic that would be specific to a type of bus, I would understand that. But if it's specific to each particular device, I don't really see a very good way to do that. So are we looking at a situation where we would need a device driver to be able to supply some kind of logic for power requirements before it actually probes? Um, so having a kind of, I don't want to call that pre-probe uh, time, where before enumerating a device on the bus, we would have the driver call trying to figure out if there's a driver that can handle that power up sequencing. Uh, that would could possibly be a different driver, but ideally it would be the same driver as the one that, that handles the device with the regular probe after that. Is that something that has been considered or is completely stupid possibly? But isn't it yeah, exactly the, the, the slot driver that was proposed by Greg yesterday, which would handle the power sequencing for the device that is connected to that slot so that the power sequencing is done by the slot driver and then the device comes up when it's but, properly but, powered. Do you but know exactly whatever, what driver it is? Power, you, but you, the, I think the, uh, there is already a lot of a lot of that with the the, the classic PM power management code, where it, it it's going to um, uh, to do the so it's what suspend region shutdown we're talking about. It's, I don't think there is like a hook for powering up, but depending on the device class, which could be a, a nothing, or just regular device or a bus device or etc. There's like four cases. Uh, you can attach your your uh, um, uh, PM operations to 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 that, so it can be a bus operation, a device operation, and there's plenty of cases. I think there's a lot covered already there. It's just a, it's just a mess to understand and then use. Uh, so more documentation for sure would help, but there's a lot there already. So it, it sounds like you're trying to reinvent something that is already there, and that oh, just no, needs no, to no, be no, 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 extended you, you a little bit. You can figure out the exact driver that's needed because you'll have a compatible string for your device node that contains the the device ID, the PCI device ID. Um, from that, you can match it to the driver. Hmm. I mean, th that's but how PCI the matches. Drivers the drivers define their own PM operation already, so. Yes, but those PM operations are provided at probe time, right? I mean, well, not yeah. necessarily provided at probe time. You have them so, in the driver structure, but I don't think drivers, that could possibly be changed, but drivers today do not expect those PM operations to be called before probe, do they? So I've suggested in the past to have exactly what you said, a pre-probe hook to call. Uh, another way it could be solved is PCI quirks, which I'm sure no one will like. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've I've pushed for the the. the it was tried. Approach. It was tried, and was rejected. Can anybody actually. hear me talking at the minute, or am I? Yes. Okay. It's all right. I, I wasn't clear if I was um, not uh, not intruding due to um, muting. But anyway, yes, yeah, so I've I've pushed for the pre probe thing before. Um, the other solution, which um, we have deployed at the minute for Soundwire, is that the probe function gets called. Uh, like uh, Srini is just mentioning that on uh, on the chat as well. We, we, the the probe function um, gets called uh, as soon as the device is known to the the bus, and then there's a further callback when the uh, hot plug event um, actually happens when the device appears. Um, for Soundwire, that's used quite extensively because the devices are actually powered off as part of runtime PM, so they are constantly hop unplugging and replugging 
on the bus during normal operation, which I guess is something that the more power sensitive systems might want to consider doing if they do have this sort of fine grain control. I think the PCI hot, hot plug driver solution would solve this because the hot plug driver is what we would use when we power down the device to detach it from, from the bus. When we want the device back, then the hot plug driver would power it up and then set up the config space again, because that logic, I think, is already there, right? But you would need to tie up somehow to the device to the information. So you don't need the whole uh, JSON file that describes the device, because it's already in the DT. Yes, we would use the device tree information to, to tell the uh, plot drive, the hot plug driver what to do, yes. But then so, the hot plug driver okay. would also be the one that um, does the that suspends the device. So just to take a step back a bit, we were discussing yesterday about the slot driver, yes. which is similar to onboard hub. Yes, that... slot, slot driver and hot plug driver, I think, is the same concept. So it's, yes. it's a PCI hot plug framework that drives the slots in PCI. Yes. Okay, 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 okay. But that slot and, driver uh, wouldn't have any intrinsic knowledge of the power sequence re, uh, required by the specific device in the slot, right? Yes. It would. So does that so mean you, that you would, have... would have one slot driver per PCI device? No, driver data with uh, specifying the uh, res resources for each uh, compatible, basically. That's how it's done on onboard hub. Right. Okay, so you would have one driver that has a long list of compatibles, and for each of them, it would encode the logic required by that particular device. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, and we might have to have multiple drivers for like SOC families if they do it differently, but like USB, or the onboard hub for USB does that today. So the same idea, and it somehow works for USB. It should be, it should be the same in the end. This one's more complex, but not fundamentally different. Correct. Is it scalable? Because in five years, we will have thousands of families for... What's wrong? No, I, I don't think we're talking about thousands. I think the the wireless devices are kind of a special case. So it, if it's one out of 100 devices and we support a few thousand devices, then it, it would be a couple dozen. I mean, it's not a huge number, but it's also a non-trivial number. I think it's a bit more than that because it's not just the Wi-Fi. I'm thinking in particular about uh, <clears throat> systems with FPGAs, for instance, that are connected to the main SOC through PCIe. Uh, there are other devices as well. What, what bothers me a bit here is not so much necessarily the number of devices, but the fact that given that the power sequence is an intrinsic property of a particular device, it would split that knowledge from the main driver from that device in, in, in a separate place. Uh, while if we had a mechanism that would allow to have one driver for a PCI device that handles the device as it does already, but also handles the power sequence in one place in a single driver. That seems to be a more logical binding of all the interesting knowledge, intrinsic knowledge of the device sorry, in a single place. No, I mean, the goal of PCI was to abstract it away. You, could, you don't know it's a white. This lets a, a designer put whatever they want on the other side of that PCI device, on bus, link, or whatever you want, physical connection. So yes, there's a lot of hard-coded ones, but I think it allows the abstraction of Here's the bus controller. Here's how to do that. And all PCI devices are independent. And you have a driver that binds to the PCI device, and away you go. Should it should that's what the goal was with PCI and USB, right? So it was yes, uh, but those devices <laughs> I, I, I are mean, really different. I, I, I mean. <laughs> I think PCIe so has all the pro all the protocol for the data, the, the enumeration, the data transfer, and lots of things there. They're plus, plus the powering up uh, that comes from the the bus power. But here, but the hardware designers have just moved or abstracted themselves away from that from the, the the power management part of PCI. They're using PCIe for all the you know, the uh, the enumeration, the data transfer. But when it comes to power management, they do that completely separately with direct power supplies and GPAOs and all that. So it's kind of a hybrid between the two. I know, I, I agree. But there is a hope that if you put this Wi-Fi chip off another PCI device and we go from, or another PCI link, it'll just work almost, there'll be some device specific ones based on the ID, but 
should be better. I mean, we do that today for real PCI devices. Yeah, let's try. That, that, this. that does <laughs> that that does rely on the electrical engineers um, restraining their creativity and how they wire things up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, we can push back. He's right. I agree. I mean, this is horrible. We always ask them to use PCI, but they came up with just another way to abuse it. So. Yeah. So. I mean, if you, if you know I, a way to have access to the hardware engineers before they build those things, uh, I would love to talk to them. But... <laughs> no, we, we did discuss the other options, like having something in the driver, having changing the device, the PCI core to, to, to power up device, like to, to bring up, to, to call the probe function of a PCI driver before it's powered up. And it, it sounds like this is the least ugly one. It's, it's not pretty because we have information about one device in two places, but that's that's as good as it gets out of out of all the bad options I guess. okay so that solves the uh, powering up of the device before discovery uh, then there is the shared resources basically and uh, the complex power sequencing and uh, this is where we basically we didn't discuss this yet yesterday too much so we need to figure out if we actually need a power sequencing subsystem, which I guess Rob is against, uh, or we could handle I'm, I'm that. I'm not against into... the subsystem necessarily. I'm, it's strictly the yes. binding uh, side. Okay, but, but I, you would I agree need with some Laura to... that that uh, the power sequencing should be with the device and with the driver. Enough. So how? then you don't need a uh, powering se sequencing subsystem. And in our case, we just figured out that as long as you have two separate GPIOs, one for Bluetooth, one for Wi-Fi, uh, and since the regulators are handled by the framework itself, you can have them in two separate places. So the slot driver would handle its own, and then the Bluetooth driver would have its own sequence and i suppose that even if a gpio was shared you can wrap it in a reset yes uh, and, and and reference it from two devices so this allows us to not have the power power sequencing subsystem for yeah, this particular you, use case all right sorry go, go on, on or... Okay, uh, I was going to say there are still a few issues, probably with some shared resources such as GPIOs, um, wrapping them in a reset controller to have them uh, reference counted is uh, one way to solve some of the problems. Uh, but sometimes you have uh, sequencing requirements that wouldn't uh, work in that case, like you, where you would need to uh, <coughs> to have power sequences for two devices, for instance, that share the same reset GPIOs to be intertwined, uh, but that's that's a then larger we, problem that is not specific to this particular problem. So I don't think we should try to solve Device that. links with PM runtime slag? It's not about one before the other. Uh, it's actually that you need to do, <clears throat> like imagine that you have a reset GPIO and that you need to do some operations before toggling the reset signal and some operation after that for two different devices. So but you need- you, for... you have prepare and uh, plenty of operations for that already. Possibly. Just possibly. like very, very few drivers actually using them, but they are there. But I think that's more for Connor case and that's something that's specific here. So I don't but think- The, the, the device link well. will do reference counting as well. So you, you can actually control- It's them. not about reference counting. It's you have GPIOs that affects two devices you go in the driver and you want to reset your device, you, at the same time, you will be resetting another device and the driver is completely unprepared for that. It's just out of sudden your device being reset. Mm -hmm. So you have to pull, in these cases, we typically with pin control and everything, we pull the control up one lever. Um, it's abusing DT, it's abusing uh, kernel, but that's the only mechanism we have right now. But you can implement that in uh, the GPIO subsystem. So having it like shared resource, like we have for regulators. The only problem is you still need to synchronize the power sequence between those two devices. So having them separately, once you, for example, disable a regulator that's used by both, you basically disable the device. Right. Well, that, I... that case is easy. The regulator is a device if you have uh, 
the child that there is reference counting, you can't disable one uh, uh, without both being disabled. So Don't what happens? One, what happens if you have some sequence like you have regulator A, you have regulator B, you need to enable disable the A, then wait a bit, you need to enable the B. So how do you do that if it's already powered on by the the other device? That means you can't reset the first one. It's not the case. Yeah. <laughs> Again, it's not the case because we have separate uh gpios but isn't it where uh, you can run it in the reset and have that sequence in your reset driver so okay but that's only for the gpio what do you do with the regulators do you you, you have regulators in your reset driver and you get <laughs> okay. them and uh, sure enough. So. So if you want to have fun one... i've seen a case we have two devices that both have a reset signal. You have a single GPIO and there's just an inverter on one of the lines. So you or you always hold one device or the other in reset and you have no other choice. <laughs> <laughs> like a, a real world scenario that, that I've run into is it's not PCI, but it, the same power sequencing requirements. You have two regulators, one is shared and one is exclusive to that one. Yes. It's an Ethernet PHY. And there's a timing requirement between when you enable the first regulator and you must enable the second re regulator within a, a limited amount of time. But since the first regulator is shared, it might be like you, you might even not be able to turn it off and turn it back on to meet that timing requirement because something else might have a consumer for that shared regulator. So this is actually the case for this specific use case. We have one of the regulators that are used by both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. We have another one that's only Bluetooth, and I think four of them use, used by the Wi-Fi. So you need to have, I think, a couple of milliseconds or something like that between the regulators enabled in order to have the device brought up correctly. So, Right. So we, you need some way to force the, the first regulator to turn off, and then that affects whatever yes. other drivers yes. are using that first so regulator it's before you can turn them both on. That's a maximum time, right? I'm not sure. Because <laughs> if, if it's only a minimum time, then you're fine. It's, it's already on. And then I think so. To... I think it's the minimum, yeah. The, yeah. the scenario I have is a maximum time. Now, the one problem that we still need to solve is for matching the PCI slot driver for hot plug, because it, since it's a PCIe system, there's already a PCIe port driver that is a hot plug driver, and we need to tell her to use our own hot plug driver instead of the one that's already there because now we have two drivers fighting over the slot. It won't be a problem. It shouldn't be a problem because you don't have a real PCIe hot plug controller on that device. And that's the only thing that would create the slot in the first place. That's part of the PCI spec, e spec. I, I would be amazed if the PCIe bus is describing itself as hot pluggable. <laughs> but if not, then you just, the way you do it is you give it a different slot name and who cares and where you go. Basically, this is the, how the device tree node looks now. So what we would do is to add a slot device tree node under the uh, uh, PCIe0 uh, device tree node. Uh, so the slot would be the parent of the PCIe0. You, you can't because the PCI bus binding is already defined with what you have there. Yeah. So I, I think the node that you have for the Wi-Fi device is actually the same node that it also describes the slot. So it has to be yeah. the same node, even though you're not binding a driver to a PCI device for the slot. You just have a slot driver that refers to the same device tree node as the device driver for the PCI device. Okay. Okay. The, the PCIe at zero node there is the root port, and that gets bound to the root port driver, I think. That should, be, that should be describing a different device entirely. Do we even need to define a PCI slot in the device tree to start with? We can't because yeah, that ship has course. sailed 20 years ago yep. or more. So we will create a virtual PCI slot device based on this, based on the, for each device entry, I guess. So we, we still need to be able to identify for which nodes in DT we want to have the the new hot plug driver bound. Yes. We can do it just based on the compatible string, 
um, or we can have no, additional no, properties no, in the existing nodes that tell us that child. we expect and there to be an, another, another hot plug driver, <laughs> and that will then look at the compatible string to see what it's doing, or at some <clears> other property. Well, you're looking at the compatible oh, string anyway in, in the driver. Why, why not use that? No, the, the driver doesn't look at the compatible. Oh, oh you mean the, um, to get the power sequencing, the uh, yeah, the correct power sequencing code. Yes. Okay. Again, uh, slot would replace the Wi-Fi at zero, right? No, it's still yeah. Wi-Fi at no. zero. Yeah, there, 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 there's there's nothing changed in the device already? tree point of view, I guess. Is it is it actually called Wi-Fi at zero? Is it not? Does it not have to be PCI at zero? PCI or PCIe is a bridge. Okay, I thought all the PCI devices are PCI at zero for, for historic reasons, not Wi-Fi at zero. No, it's based on it's based on device class, okay. basically. So it's not entirely clear to me where the slot drivers compatible will be and where it will be like who who will populate the slot uh, devices and. Yeah, where, 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 where the compatible will live on, on this, like, how do we modify? What do we remove? What do we add? I think we just add properties in the Wi-Fi node for whatever the slot needs, because the node refers to both the device and the slot, as far as I can tell. And there's no... No, because the slot controller... Can you take, can you take the mic? I mean, this, no, I don't know. It's because it's, it controls... It's like an... It's an out of band control. It's not a child. It's just a description. You can't link this other tree. Can you have another just enumeration of PCI slots, a different device type that refers to that PCI over there? It's again, it's not really accurate from hardware point of view because it it, it needs to be under the 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 PCI uh, device, you know. But no, so that's not the way PCI itself works, though. So this, this rec property identifies the slot. The, the, the rec property under the Wi-Fi node identifies the slot. Yes. And so, but, it, but for, that's not what a PCI standard, slot is. For standard slots, then, uh, with with standard power rails and um, reset lines, those properties have gone either in the what would be here the PCIe four node which isn't really accurate, um, or the PCIe at zero node. Yeah, but we PCIe have standard properties for those because yes. there's it's standard. <laughs> yeah, but that would make more sense. And so you, you need the compatible for the specific device you have plugged in there because it's not powered up yet, and so you can't enumerate it, yes. if I'm getting that correctly? Correct. OK. Weird. Yeah. I'm not just well, no, it is not PCIe, no. But we're, we're abusing the existing Linux interface because that's what they're doing. Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but PCI has always had onboard stuff which doesn't necessarily follow the same power sequencing. Sure. Can you show the chat on the screen? Um, maybe. <laughs> I don't think you can. From no? Top left. Uh, top left. Not sure what I did. Uh, here, I think. This one. Minimize presentation now. No, I don't know. Share screen. So the question was, uh, wasn't support added recently to augment <laughs> info from PCI probing with info from DFT? Uh, the answer there is no, that's been supported forever. Um, what was added um, was generating device tree nodes from the what was discovered by PCI, which is a different problem and we're talking about tomorrow. So I guess Git had a question about the PCI dynamic of nodes. That's what I was referring to. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. 
So these are DT nodes that are created from. These are created yeah. after or during probe. I mean, af after you discover the device. Um, and for the purpose of applying overlays um, in the driver for, for additional devices downstream of the PCI device itself. So it's already too late for discovery. Yes, it's it's a different problem. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so assuming we've solved the problem for PCI, what about MDIO and I squared C? When is that discussion happening? So I think MDIO is already. I squared C is not discoverable. So. You don't need that for I squared C. It's not discoverable. Why do you need it for I squared C? That's a different problem, Dimitri had. Right? Yeah, I think I, I just see the devices generic. already have their power sequences in them routinely. Same for SPY and other non-discoverable buses. I think we need to recognize that we have a problem of uh, describing power sequences and putting them in the functional drivers, I think, um, is a short-term solution that works okay and we, we've been doing that for years but a uh, longer term i think we need to separate uh separate the two concepts and we need a way to independently power up a piece of hardware and then drive the, its functionality so basically you're saying uh the host controller should handle some kind of powering up even for non non discoverable buses i'm not saying it's a host controller but it should be a fairly generic piece of software that allows you to power up a device and then uh, you could have several means of accessing it and interacting with it uh, so, while it's being powered so is this the case where you have multiple devices attached to i square c that share the same uh, powering up sequences um, not necessarily. Uh, I think I, I'm thinking about cases where you have um, a drive, well, a piece of hardware. Uh, you want to, for example, flush a firmware into it. Uh, that is often done uh, or can be done from user space by uh, using the generic I square C, def I square C, def hydro, um, whatever else. And then you have the another part of the driver that implements the functionality, uh, for example, a touchpad or your uh, sensor or what's not, um, that part typically lives in the kernel and it belongs in the kernel, but coordinating between user space access and the kernel piece is complicated. And if you can separate it, um, deactivate the driver, flush the firmware, activate the driver again it's all much cleaner than trying to write a bunch of kernel code that handles all these transitions that happens once in a blue moon but you still need to handle essentially all the uh, errors all the failing uh, potentially failing operations recovering from it it's complicated and doesn't have to be and, but and why, why can't you just unbind the driver over SysFS to your... Uh... Uh, then you unbind the driver, your normal driver powering down brings it down. So in Chrome OS, we have a hack saying, uh -huh. well, on unbind, we actually leave the regulators on. Yes, we're leaving power. Yes, it happens. We can survive it till next reboot. Is it? Is it nice? No. Is it working? Yeah. We need to uh, unbind a bit attribute. And... <laughs> yeah, th there, there's um, some devices unbind. that wouldn't be particularly pleasant for uh, because they're doing uh, detailed power management at runtime. So they, um, they actually want to have control over all their resources and uh, might potentially go into um, an all, uh, at runtime into an almost off state. Um, even um, so, you're tr trying to split out the um, the power up sequence from uh, and power manage the actual physical power management of the device as, as opposed to the sort of 
more runtimey stuff um, can get really tricky for them. So I, I don't know, or if we do, if we do something like you're, what you're suggesting, we need an out for devices that um, really want the generic code to get out of the way and do their own thing. So I'm not saying that it's only limited to the power up sequencing. It's really power management. So if you look at the CPI, what I'm saying, like some of it can get really, really, uh, really detailed. Um, and we might trying to solve the whole or trying to solve the problem for the devices that are doing the very fancy always on type stuff might be trying to boil the ocean compared to the use cases you're you seem to be thinking of. Okay, so we have two more minutes left. Uh, Sorry. Sorry. Five? No, two. Something like that. Anyway. <laughs> Can can we go over? Uh, we have another session coming <coughs> after this, but uh, it's Paul McKinney. I think he's nice enough to have uh, a couple of minutes. Okay. But, uh, we're not anyway, well, let's summarize uh, what we discussed. So for the extra TNS laptop, we will go with the slot driver solution. Uh, and it seems that the power sequence is simple enough that we can be, yeah, we can split it between the two devices and uh, the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, and still we, we don't need to add anything other than what already exists in the kernel. And so, so no power sequencing uh, subsystem. Subsystem, no. Yeah. But we may still revisit it for other buses because we, we it's it's a problem <coughs> that we cannot most likely fix in a in a generic way across the kernel. We will have to take one take it one bus at a time. Then you would have uh, the slot driver basically on probe after powering up would have somehow to do the hot plugging stuff. I don't know how that works yet. It's not going to be a hard, uh, hot, plug, hot plug driver. It's going to be a PCI driver basically for the slot. Yeah, it differs because we have the data in device tree. So what we, yeah, but the way we see it is the Qualcomm uh, uh, PCI driver could do platform populate to add no, the devices. No, 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 don't do that. Well, like, once it's powered up, you get a new age, new age, just PCI. So, okay, and what other options are you thinking of? Um, so we have, we might need to have the concept of loading a PCI hot plug driver from the PCI core. I don't know how they interact right now, but we have to, something has to probe the PCI hotback driver based on the IDs in, in the device tree. Um, it, I don't think the, we should have anything in the PCI host driver that is Qualcomm specific, like specific to the SOC in here. None of this is specific to the SOC. It needs to work with any kind of SOC that has the same device. Yes. So they it. want that why we could move that outside to the PCI generic implementation. So, okay. I said, try it and see, but look at like some of the legacy PCI hot plug drivers today. I point out the compact, if it's still in there, the compact PCI hot plug driver, because that was an out of band platform specific before there was a PCIe spec, before there was an ACPI spec. It just knew how to control these and pass off the information to the. PCI so who core. populates the device for the slot in this case? The so the plug. PCIe, so the compact PCI hot plug driver says, "Okay, I'm powering on," and then it goes tells the core. Now you can now you can scan that bus and go from there. So take a look at how it works, and you can email me, and we can talk about it. But I think it's I think you're making it. You're overthinking and try it. I think let's try it and work it. Work through it. Let's work through it. Okay. Okay. And then insist that it won't work, so let's prove it. <laughs> <laughs> or prove me wrong. Okay. Anyway. That will be it. Thank you very much. That's it. That's it.